when God and I were lost to the dark, I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Do you know it was the blood? Hallelujah. He sweet. I know. Oh, he sweet. I know. Storm clouds may rise and stormy winds may blow but I'll tell the world oh wherever I go that I have found a Savior He is sweet I know Can you help us say it tonight? Oh, He Yes, he sweet. I know. Storm clouds may rise. Storm clouds may rise. And stormy winds, stormy winds. But I'll, I'll tell the world Ooh, wherever I go Has anybody found a savior tonight? Oh, that I Tonight. 
right. Holly, it don't matter where I go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad that I your hands together if you found a savior hallelujah if you found a savior can you put your hands together hallelujah and tell them thank you lord i thank you for being the savior lord i thank you for being the deliverer lord i thank you for being sweet in my life hallelujah 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 you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches to me, come on help me sing, say you are my strength, you are my strength, hallelujah, Say strength like no other. Like no other. Strength like no other. Like no other. And it reaches to me. One more time. Come on, say it. Say you are my strength. You are my strength. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Strength like no other, and it reaches to me. Hallelujah! Say in the fullness of fullness of your, say in the power. Hallelujah! Tonight, Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Tonight, that's what we're going to do. Say, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Say, in the fullness, in the fullness of your, in the power of, hallelujah, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how it feel, Lord. We got to be found lifting them up. We lift you up. Hallelujah. In the fullness of your grace. Say, in the fullness of your Say, in the power of Hallelujah. Does anybody witness the name of Jesus? We lift him up tonight. Hallelujah. Anybody, can you lift the name of the Lord? We lift you up. your name is above all names tonight. We lift you up. Lift you up. Yes, in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of the name. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. We lift you up. Oh, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, hallelujah, Lord, we lift you up, 
lift you up. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. We lift you up. Hallelujah. One more time in the fullness of your grace. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In the power of your name. Hallelujah. Every situation will be changed, Lord. We lift you up. We lift you up tonight, Lord. One more time. Oh, in the fullness of your In the power of your name. In the power Hallelujah. Yes, we do. We lift you up. Oh, we lift you up. Say you are my strength. You are my strength. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Like no other. And it reaches to me. Hallelujah. Last time without the music. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and say, You are my strength. Hallelujah. Come on. Strength like no Strength like no other. Strength like no other. like no other. Hallelujah. And it reaches to me. Hallelujah. And it reaches to me. Hallelujah. Last time. And it reaches to me. Hallelujah. Now, come on, give the Lord one big hand praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together as we receive our bishop. Hallelujah. If the Lord has been good to you, you ought to give him praise. Hallelujah. You might as well lift him up and give him glory. Hallelujah. If he's been your strength, hallelujah. In the time of the storm, hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. If he's the one that held you together, hallelujah. Come on and give him glory tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly we thank and praise God tonight for coming together. Thank God for the praise team, the devotion that we had. Um, I think that we were in for a treat tonight like we were on Sunday. Um, uh, we just thank God for our Bishop tonight, all the way from Zambia, Africa, Zambia, <laughs> amen, and uh, Bishop Emmanuel Wape, and I, I, I asked him over there, what was he going to do tonight, he said he's going to do a little bit of teaching and a little bit of preaching, and I thought about the scriptures that Israel was a long time without a teaching priest. <laughs> So we want him to come in his own way tonight and certainly we will sit in prayer as he go forth because I think that he's here for a reason and a purpose and I feel like that God does have something for the church tonight. So if you would give him your undivided attention and at this time let's receive Bishop Emmanuel Mwape from Zambia. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you. I love the way Bishop has uh, pronounced my name and my country today. At least uh, things are getting better. <laughs> Greetings from Zambia. Amen. They are greeting you all, the saints of God, together with my wife. She told me, go and greet them. Amen. So uh, today is a wonderful day. I know we, we always have prayers according to what I've been told and uh, the program that 
is for this church. And please, sorry to say this through the mic. I don't know if somebody can come and say it for me. There are some people that wants to follow the program uh, outside. There are people that follow me and they really demanded that uh, whatever I would do here, they should be following. Anyone come to set, set my Facebook, please, and maybe tag me. Yeah, thank you. Do it for Right, they can come and pick my phone and then tag me. Sorry to do that. I'm really sorry. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Sorry for that. Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a, a teaching. Then uh, we'll go in the preaching of the word. I am not a teacher, but I can receive the grace to teach. Amen. After I talked about fear a little bit, when I went back to the hotel room, the Lord told me that I need to talk about fear in full. I need just to talk about fear in full. And uh, I had a visitation yesterday and it was not God's visitation, it was the enemy's visitation. And um, I am not talking about that to exhort the devil. I'm just letting you know that the enemy will come. Just like God has no respect of person, the devil as well has no respect of person. If he visited Jesus, as God in the flesh and tempted him who are you and who am I but there are some things that we are going to talk about I couldn't sleep the Lord took away sleep from, from me and I just stayed in the hotel I don't know, I couldn't sleep after I stopped uh, talking to my wife I thought maybe it was because, you know, I was joyous seeing a, fa a beautiful face. And this is why my sleep was taken over from me. But, you know, the Lord sometimes does something for a reason. And um, I, was, I was just there. And I tried to sleep. I couldn't sleep. But around 3, imagine I reached up to 3 a.m. in the morning. That's when the sleep came. But oh my God, the enemy came. I was hearing the fear that I hear most of the times when the enemy wants to attack me. And he was whispering a lot of things. He was telling me, don't you know you're going to die? Don't you know I'm going to kill you? Don't you know one day you're going to die? <laughs> and he talked. And he talked. And certain, you know, pictures and a lot of ways that the enemy spoke and please I'm not saying this to bring fear because I'm dealing with fear today I'm not, I'm not saying I'm giving this testimony to bring fear on you but I'm just trying to open your minds so he spoke and really brought this fear and the whole room was heavy and uh, I slept I had visitation in my sleep then I woke up and then prayed, then overcame. But it took too long for me to overcome, but I overcame, then I slept. But what happened during the day, the Spirit of the Lord walked me out of the hotel room. It was in the afternoon. He told me to go outside to, to, to do sun bathing. You know, we like the sun in Africa, but here it's too hot, but I went outside. But there's something that the Spirit of the Lord showed me to say, do you see this? It simply means that this area has been under the governance of demonic powers. I said, are you really? You know, there are signs that the enemy will put in a particular place to indicate that this is the territory of the enemy. But it doesn't matter. You may be in the territory of the enemy. One thing that you need to understand is, is that God is always with us. So as long as God is always with us, we'll never fear. 
we we'll always be courageous knowing that God is always with us. Amen. So let's go in the word. Let's go in the word. First John chapter 4 verse 16 to 18. Thank you, Jesus. First, first John chapter 4, verse 16. First John chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, quickly let me read. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and uh, God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may be have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love may the Lord bless the reading of the word in Jesus name Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to talk about um, dealing with fear. Like I said, that's the theme of my sharing this evening. Dealing with fear. I would like you to understand or know that there are two kinds of fear. There are two kinds of fear. There's one fear which comes from the devil or from our enemies. We all have enemies. And the reason why the enemies uses fear is to threaten you and me by trying to intimidate you. So the reason why he brings fear is to intimidate you because he knows that you're so powerful. So for him to overcome you, for your enemy to overcome you, he threatens you with fear so that you become intimidated. The enemy will try to do that to make you feel vulnerable. And anytime one is vulnerable, fear creeps in. Am I right? Fear comes in. It comes in. When fear creeps in, then faith is robbed from you. Hallelujah. He's taken away from you. And that's what the enemy does. Because it is, fee, it is faith that gives you the victory. And this is the, vic, this is the victory that we have even our faith. So faith in God gives you victory. And I'm asking for somebody to pray for me because this is not an easy topic because somebody is going to be delivered tonight. And the enemy doesn't want me to talk about this. I ask for your intercession as you are seated there. So, when fear comes in, faith is robbed. And the enemy knows that it is faith that gives you victory in whatever you are doing in the Lord. And uh, he would want by all means to make sure that faith is taken away from you. So he attacks you. Then he begins to torment you, afflict you, oppress you, and torture you. Fear, like I said, is the opposite of faith. Where there is no faith, there is fear. 
And let me say this, that each and every one of us in here has a portion of fear. You have it. I have it. And if you don't know how to deal with that portion of fear, the enemy will take advantage of you and torment you. Even as anointed as Elijah was, he had a portion of fear. This is a man who just comes from, you know, killing the prophet of, of Jezebel, the prophet of Baal. He slaughters them and here appears Jezebel, a wicked woman. And this anointed man flees, Bishop. <laughs> he flees in the wilderness. So we all have a portion of fear. And the enemy knows that. And if you are not careful, he takes advantage of the fear that is in you. And he begins to torment you on the same fear. Don't you ask yourself why at times in your sleep you begin to see pictures that are fearful? I want, I have an answer for you. The reason why you are seeing those pictures that are fearful, images that are bringing fear in you, is because the enemy has already started attacking you by face of you giving you pictures that will bring fear on you. And immediately fear creeps on you. The enemy begins to attack you in the sleep. Victory is not when you are, you, are, you are still awake. Victory is always, is also, can also be done when you are asleep. I have dreamed at one time, wicked dreams, and in the very dream, because I did not use fear, immediately I rise in my faith, in my sleep, and shout in the might name of Jesus immediately that nightmare would disappear. So what the enemy does is first of all he starts bringing you know images in your mind and show you maybe some skeletons and some in wicked images. I lift my hand to God. Whatever pictures the enemy has been showing you may they come to an end today in Jesus mighty name. That happens in Africa when the witches want to bewitch you. They come in your room. You know, they come in the spirit. You built your house and they enter into your room uninvited. They come and they begin to torture you and they begin to torment you in the night. And they love that. They just love to do that because you are the enemy of the devil. And he wants to see you. You know, in the satanic kingdom, when you're being tormented in the night, you're turning around. They even laugh. They even look at the child of God. Look at the way he's turning. Look at the way he's crying in the night. And you're screaming in the night. They just love that. Because they love to afflict and torment you. They love to see you, you know, not exercising the authority that God has given you. And tonight, Something is going to change over your life. I said something is going to change tonight. Because there is no way you can be a child of God and continue. I know the devil can visit you, but he cannot just continue all the time to be visiting you. The Bible says he came to Jesus and tempted him and left him for a while. Which means the devil can leave you. Maybe come later. But some of you are tormented every time. And this is why I came today to tell you that yes, the enemy will come because it's not a respect of persons. But it shouldn't be all the time. You are having sleepless night. It shouldn't be all the time. That's why God, you know, divided these two times, the night and the day. The night in which to rest. The day in which to labor. 
So when the night comes, I should have a good sleep. So that's a revelation that you need to walk in. God did not create the night for the devil. He created for you to have a nice sleep. I know there's somebody in here that don't even sleep. You spend the whole night awake because you're afraid of what the devil is going to do to you when you sleep. But I rise in the authority and the power that is in the name of Jesus that today every devil that has been tormenting your life will leave you in Jesus mighty name. Let me say this, that the enemy cannot possess you as a child of God because you are sealed with the spirit of God. Some preachers have said a child of God can be possessed. No, 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 no. The devil cannot dwell in the same temple in which the spirit of God lives. And he are the temple of the spirit. Let me correct that error. Let me correct that error. If a preacher tells you you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you are spoken in tongues and comes to tell you that you are possessed. No, 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 no. You cannot be possessed as a child of God. But the enemy can only oppress you or torment you. Oppression happens from the inside. Hello, somebody. Oppression comes from the outside. The enemy can also obsess you. He can take over your mind and control your mind. But the devil cannot possess you. The devil possesses people who have no spirit of God. And somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking good here? So every spirit that has been tormenting you under the grace of our bishop today and the anointing that I'm coming with from Africa, I decree and declare every devil today will live your life in Jesus name. Tonight is your night for your deliverance. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. So, he, the enemy brings that fear so that he torments you and oppresses you. Then the second fear that I'm going to talk about is the fear of God. The fear of God. This fear of God is not the one which comes with intimidation or affliction. This fear of God is the fear that makes you walk in the fear of God. Amen. It is the fear which comes so that you continue to honor God. It means to revere. Hallelujah. Where the word reverend comes from. Because reverend is not a calling bishop. Reverend is just a way that means honor, respect. We, it's, not, it's not in the Bible. We hear people given reverend, reverend, all right, fine. But it just simply means honor. So the, the, this fear that we should walk in as children of God is not that which will make God to torment us because God is not a dictator. Amen. God is love. And he loves us with the agape love. He doesn't threaten us to love him. He doesn't threaten us to walk with him. He teaches us to love him. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thine heart, with all thine strength, with all thine soul. Amen. That is just him, the agape love. That is what you need to walk in. When you walk in this love, this love does not bring torment. This love does not bring affliction. This love helps you to exercise the authority that God has given you. You have the authority where you are. 
I said, you have the authority. Jesus said, I have given you the authority to trade on serpents and on scorpions. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that no voodoo in U.S., no witch in Africa. Some of you are afraid of the witches. No devil worshiper, no Freemason, no illuminant. And I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. Nothing can do you any harm. I, I, I came from Zambia to, to come and make giants in here. I came to make giants here. Enough is enough. Some of you, you are students at your school. You meet some of these, your friends who are into occultism. And when you see them, you turn the other way around. I came to raise giants here. I was at the airport, Bishop. And uh, <laughs> I just landed in the U.S. And I saw four guys. These were whites. And they were... We were, you know, about to be checked uh, by the security. So they were in front of me. And there are tattoos everywhere. And the spirit of the Lord started telling me, these guys are into occultism. They are devil worshippers, these guys. They are four of them. And the other one, the eyes were just something else. You know, you can even tell the devil in the eyes. There are also tattoos that will show that this guy is a devil worshiper. They had funny tattoos, you know, the eye on the elbow. And uh, the, the eye, you know, the eye means the Illuminati, you know, uh, which is on your dollar, the one dollar. <laughs> God help America. So I looked at them, then the spirit of the Lord was boiling within me. And I was not afraid of them. But the guy was in front of them, started, you know, drawing back and giving them a distance. And they were chatting. There were four of them, freely chatting. And you can know that these are peaceful guys. But I knew in the spirit that these guys are devil worshippers. I pray for you today that God will give you eyes to know those that are in the devil's kingdom. And I pray for you that God will give you boldness. I never heard Jesus meeting a possessed person and running away from that possessed person. I hear the Bible telling me that immediately he made this man at the tomb. This man started crying. What have you come to do? And do us, thou son of David, before our time. Some of you are students at your college. And you know, these guys and these girls are into occultism and you fear them. I pray that tonight God will give you power to a level whereby they'll be looking into your eyes and they'll be seeing the fire. And I'm not just talking about any other fire, but the fire of the Holy Ghost. Some of you, you live in the neighborhood full of witches. I pray that tonight they will feel your presence. You go to your home place and they will feel something else that they have never felt before. Because the presence that we carry is the omnipresent God. It doesn't just end in your bedroom. It has to fill the neighborhood. I've always told, told people that I will never move out of the neighborhood because it is full of witches. I would rather trouble the witches than the witches troubling me. I would rather allow the witches to move to another town than me moving to another town because the town I live in are full of witches. How many, time, how many towns are you going to go to because you are afraid of the witches? I came to raise lions in here. We need to be bored. Let them know that we carry the great I am. Let them look at you and begin to tremble. Begin to tell you we are afraid of what you are carrying. We are afraid of the power that you have. Amen somebody. 
I feel the power of God. I feel something is going to happen tonight. Can somebody say hallelujah? Now, you need to understand this, that the reason why the enemy is after you is because you came out of his kingdom and you will never be a friends with the devil. Stop making, stop making, stop trying to be friends with the devil. He will no longer be our friend. He, will, he is a devil. And a devil is a devil. Whether you read scriptures in his ears, you will never repent. He is a devil. Stop playing with the devil. Leave the devil alone. Be who God called you to be. To be. Amen, somebody. Some of you are trying to, amen, study the devil and hear. Some of you, you celebrate heroin. Oh, my God. You celebrate the witch's day. Have nothing, the Bible says, have nothing to do with the works of darkness. If you've been celebrating heroin in here, you have not yet repented. How do you celebrate the witches? How do you celebrate the day of the witches? Some of you, so you are even putting on their costumes. As we pray that witches should die in Africa. Because the Bible says so. Suffer not a witch to live. Yes, that's what we do. If they are stubborn enough, they don't want to repent, they die. They die. Because these guys, they mean business. If they want to kill you, they will kill you. And if God sees that uh, to persistence, to torment you, he kills them. And some of you are so righteous that such that you don't want your enemies to die. Oh, come on. He killed, he killed Herod. God killed Herod. Why? Because he tormented the early church. And he sat on the seat and began to speak. And I said, oh, he speaks like a God. <laughs> but my God came down and smote him with maggots. And he died on the throne. I come to announce to you some of the witches in your life that don't want to repent. God will kill them. Yes. I know you don't like that. There are witches that will never repent. This seal stands sure. The Lord knoweth that I is. So if that witch is not of God, they will die. Some of them. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I came to stir you up today. I came to provoke you today. Enough of that fear. Enough of that fear. Some of you, you, you sleep on pills. You have to take medication for you to sleep. A lot of them in your wardrobe. May God deliver you. It's not written that for you to sleep, take some pills. God gives rest to his children. Today you begin to sleep like a baby. Every voice from the kingdom of darkness that has been speaking to you, I stand here with the authority of God. We silence that voice. We silence that voice in Jesus' mighty name. The reason why the enemy is doing that is because you are the enemy of God. This is why he visits you all the time. Torments you all the time. Because from the day we became born again, we became fugitives. Amen. We became rebels. We became breakaways. And enemies of the devil. And are you telling me your enemy will be happy with you? No. He's not happy. But one thing that you need to know is that the enemy knows the power that you are carrying. And that is the Holy Ghost power. You don't just carry the Holy Ghost power, but the Holy Ghost fire also. <laughs> 
the Holy Ghost fire is able to consume the witches. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he that cometh is greater than I, whose sandals I'm, un I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. So as a child of God, you don't just carry the power of God, but you carry the fire. May the fire that you carry consume the enemies in your territory. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody shout hallelujah. But you need to walk in that. You need to know that. The problem is, is we come to church, get this knowledge, walk through that door, see a picture that is of the devil, again we go back in the, in, in the fear. You don't do that as a child of God. You get the knowledge and begin to walk in the knowledge. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that you talk. It is the truth that you walk in. It is the truth that you sleep with. It is the truth that you eat with that shall set you free. Don't leave the truth here. Go with the truth at your college. Go with the truth at your university. Go with the truth at your, your, your school. And let the devil know that you are a child of God. These guys have to know. When David appeared where Goliath was, the devil knew that a champion has appeared. May you be a champion in Jesus' name. So the devil always fight us. He will always fight us because we are rebels. He, 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 he considers us as, 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 as labels, as enemies of his kingdom. And we, we all know how a rebel or a fugitive is treated. We all know that. Rebels are killed. This is why I said stop playing with the devil. Because the devil is not after any good but to kill you. He is a thief who comes to steal, kill and do what? Destroy so stop playing with the devil. Stop celebrating these demonic activities. Stop putting on, you know, a, a t-shirt that has got a skeleton on it. Even a devil star. There are certain clothes that are demonic. You don't put on that. There's a guy I was praying for in the U.S. back home. And he told me, you know, we, we are into this occultism. And they tell us that Jesus is some guy who is nothing. You know, this is how they pollute your mind, young, young folks. They pollute your mind to tell, you know, Jesus is nothing. It's just, you're wasting your time. It's just, he was some poor guy that lived on this planet. He's not some poor guy. He's not some poor guy. My Savior is rich. My Savior is all-powerful. My Savior is omnipotent. My Savior is omnipresent. He is everything. So those lies of the devil, we bind them. We render them powerless. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So fight every devil. And make sure you don't give him space in, area, in any area of your life. Make sure you fight him. You defeat him. Fight him. And the fight that we are in is not a bad fight. It's not a wicked fight. Paul calls it the good fight of faith. <laughs> it is a good fight. Meaning that you are on the right side. The devil is on the bad side. You know, a, a boy is encouraging Timothy, my son, fight the good fight of faith. I come to announce to you that every fight that you engage yourself into as a child of God, you come out victorious. Hallelujah. So the following, I'm about to conclude, the following are ways of overcoming fear. I have about nine of them and I'm going to be quickly before I, we jump into something. There are about nine ways of overcoming fear. Number one, I'm going to be quick. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Many people don't know their identity in Christ Jesus. If you don't know who you are, then the devil will work on you. 
I know I'm a Zambian and I cannot pretend to be American. I am. And you can take away that from me. The Bible says as many as have received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that have re- believed on his name. The word power there simply means authority or the rights. The day you became a child of God, you've been given the rights to become a child of God. So whatever is in the kingdom of God is on your life. That's why the Bible says, as he is, if you read one scripture, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. If God cannot be attacked by the devil, you shouldn't be attacked by the devil. If God cannot be attacked by sickness, you should not be attacked by sickness. Walk in that revelation. If the witches cannot touch God, they cannot touch you. Because you are a child of God. So know who you are. Don't be a chameleon today. You know the animal chameleon? <laughs> you are with us. You are pretending to be a child of God. You walk through that door. You change the other color. What's wrong with you? Maintain your color. Maintain who you are. Maintain your identity. Even when you find corrupt people at your workplace telling you, let's change figures here. Maintain who you are. Let's steal some dollars here. Can you see? Maintain who you are. Don't be a chameleon. When they are drinking, you are drinking. And when they are smoking, you are smoking. Drugs, you are doing drugs. What's wrong with you? What is your identity? You are a Christian when any man is in Christ, is a new creation. Old things have passed away, behold, new things have come. Know who you are. And the devil will know that this is a child of God. Why did he tell Jesus, We know that thou art the son of David? He knew. Some of you, the devil doesn't even know you. Some of you, the devil even counts you to say, Ah, this one, leave him, he's ours already. It shall not be a portion in Jesus' name. I said it shall not be a portion in Jesus' name. And somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Number two. Never at all entertain thoughts of fear. There are some of you that entertain fear. Fear will come when you are, you are flying. Fear will come when you are on a car that is speeding. <laughs> fear will come when power is not in your house. Fear comes anytime. But do not entertain fear. Do not allow f- fear for thoughts to, you know, to stay into your mind all the day or all the night. Anytime you hear fear, say fear, I bind you. Anytime you hear fear, say fear, I cast you out of my life. Speak to fear. Hallelujah, somebody. So don't ever entertain fear. Number three, rebuke voices of fear. From Satan, no matter how many times he speaks. And somebody said, hallelujah. Like I told you yesterday, he was speaking. Even when I'm flying, I'm seated and there's, we were coming from North Carolina to this place. And we had some turbulence on the flight. About three of them, you know. <laughs> and the devil whispered, can you see the flight is going to fall and you die. You will crash and die. I said, devil, you are a liar. I didn't come here to, to die. There are some things I declare. I know I am a king. You are a king. And a king dies a noble death. Dying in a plane crash is not a noble death. Where they can't even see my body. You hear what I'm saying? Dying in a road accident is not a noble death. Where your the head is that side, the, the leg is there. <laughs> you will not die like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will not die like that because you are a king. 
you know, you die smiling. And when your time comes, don't fear death, we will all die. Some of you say, what kind of bishop is this one talking about death, death, death? You will die. And my wife doesn't like me when I talk about that. I always teach in the church. I say, one day I will die. Amen. And she said, don't talk about that to me. <laughs> we will die. But we will not die an untimely death. At the appointed time of God, that's when we are going home. And I bind every planned death over your life. Every demonic plan to kill you, you shall not die. I said you shall not die. That cancer shall not kill you. That sickness shall not kill you. HIV shall not kill you. Any demonic agenda shall not kill you. The Bible says we shall not die but live to declare the goodness of the Lord. I lift my hand to God. May you live and not die. In Jesus name. You shall not die by gun. You shall not die by knife. You shall not die by voodoos, by witches, by powers of darkness. You shall live. May the power of God overshadow your life. Every arrow of death trying to locate your life, I break it. I destroy it. The sickness that your doctor said will kill you, I command it to leave your body. Be healed right now. Even as I speak, may that sickness depart from your body. May that disease go. For you took away sickness on the cross of Calvary. You don't bear any. You sickness in that body, I bind you. You cancer, I bind you. I said be healed. You will not die this year. You will not die next year. You will not die in 2025. You will not die in 2026. You will not die in 2027. You will not die in 2028. You will not die in 2029. Whatever the doctor said, I come to announce you will not die. But live to declare the goodness of the Lord. You have a testimony to tell. You have a lot of things to accomplish in your life. So the devil will not take you so soon before you leave the expectations of your heart. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hey, hallelujah. I feel the presence of God here. Amen, somebody. So talk to fear. Amen. Rebuke the voices of fear. Tell them, you have no space in my mind. You have no space in my, my mind. Number four, do not watch horror movies. <laughs> yeah, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. Oh, child, stop watching. The, it's just a movie, dad. It's just a movie, man. Oh, wife, it's just a movie, just a movie. It's not a movie. It's the weapon of the devil. There's a pastor friend of mine, Bishop. He loves to watch these, you know, long teeth horror movies. And uh, they are biting the neck of somebody. And the blood is coming. And I said, Pastor, what is this? He said, ah, no problem. Yeah, I watch this. No. I know it's a movie. But there is a spirit behind that movie that wants to inflict fear on you. I'm telling you, you may not tell me, but I know when you go to sleep, some of you that watch these horror movies, <laughs> the fear that creeps on you. <laughs> I know. There are some movies that I just... And I switch on to something else that will help my mind to be sober. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. Whatsoever things, whatsoever things are good, 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 good things. Think about it. Watch those things. 
Don't just watch anything. Hallelujah. Watch nice movies. What's wrong with you? And the witches are coming. Yeah, witches is flying on a broom. And you know they play the they, way they play those uh, you know those sounds behind those movies, and they send a certain signal in your mind, and your character is made up by what you see. Your kind of behavior is made up by, by what you hear. I was a Rastafarian. And the music I used to play was that of Rastafari and the Mutabalukas and the Peter Tosh. And because I used to hear that and watch that, it made me to be a Rastafarian. When I came out of that, I'm no longer a Rastafarian. Because I no longer watch that. The reason why you're acting like Tupac <laughs> is because some of the things you watch are those of Tupac. Sorry, it's, 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 it's late already. But, you know, it's, it's, his spirit is still alive in some of the people. I see people behaving like Mike Jackson even up to today. <laughs> Dancing like Mike Jackson. But he's dead. Jezebel was dead a long time ago, but he's mentioned in the book of Revelation. Somebody may die, but the spirit may be living and... Uh, Influencing other people. The reason why you dress like that, talk like that, is because of what you hear. What kind of music do you hear? What kind of movies do you hear? Do you watch? <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. I'll be glad to go back to Zambia and uh, my ticket is being registered in heaven. Number five, be God conscious and not devil conscious. There are people who are children of God who are devil conscious than God conscious. They see the shadow or the devil has passed. Even their own shadow is the devil. They fear even their own. All they see is the devil. All there's food. In, there's the devil in the food. Oh, this cloth has got the devil. He, this one is, is devil everywhere. You can't overcome fear when you are devil conscious. Stop thinking about this guy. He's a useless guy. He's a defeated foul. The Bible says he is a rolling lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Maybe you don't understand that because I come from where lions are. If you say a rolling lion, it simply means it's a lion that has no teeth. So he only rolls at you. And when you fear, he devours you. The devil is defeated. I'm going to talk about that. Let me, let me leave it to some other things. <laughs> He is defeated. He has no power. Oh, the devil in the USA, the witches, the witches, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Let's meet them just like Elijah challenged the prophet of Baal. Bring them over. That's what we need to do. How are they going to see that we are the children of God? We are Pentecost and apostolic. You know, this church carries power. We carry power. Genuine power. So stop being devil conscious all the time. Oh, you see, it's the devil. When you are devil conscious, fear will creep into your mind. Quickly, amen. Quickly. Number six, talk back to your enemies. And this should not be just mere talk. But God's word talk. No matter how anointed Jesus, our Lord and Savior was, he still spoke his word back or in the face of the enemy. The devil can twist the word, but caught the word the way you know it. Do you know why they bring boxers before they go into the ring maybe three days or four days before the fight do you know the, why they bring them together to speak to one another <laughs> do you know why let me tell you today they bring you they bring them together to speak to one another because 
the words that they speak can inflict the opponent to a level whereby even before they go into the ring, the opponent has already been knocked down. So how the, 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 the opponent speaks matters. You don't just speak anyhow. I know Ali Muhammad was very powerful, but he knew how to speak as well. I'm going to knock you down. And the first round, I'm going to make sure that you are down. I'm going to finish you. And he's speaking. And, and you talk, you know. You don't, when your time comes, talk. Some boxers have been defeated because they heard how the friend talked. And they go in the ring already defeated. I want to tell you this, that the devil knows the word of God. He's not afraid of anything. He's afraid of, his, of the word of God. He knows that the word of God is the constitution that governs the kingdom of God. That's why his kingdom is confused because the devil has no word. They have no Bible. They eat each other. They kill each other. We don't kill each other. I cannot eat you. <laughs> Sorry to say that. But they eat each other. These guys are confused. But we have a constitution that govern us. Order is there in the kingdom of God. So when you talk the word of God, the devil knows that this one knows who he is. And talk the rema word. Know what you're bringing out. Tell him, devil, I am a child of God. Tell him, devil, I'm born again. I'm filled with the power of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. You know, the devil kept on talking to Jesus, but the Bible says, and he left him. The devil doesn't leave anyone who doesn't know the word of God. He will keep on talking to you. Keep on talking nonsense into your ears because you are not talking back to the devil. I pray for you that today God will give you boldness to speak back to the witches. You know, sometimes they come spiritually and sometimes they will come physically. There are witches that have attacked you. They have just come physically and tell you, I'm going to kill you. I'll kill you because you, because you, you are a problem. You, you, you make a lot of noise with prayer. Tell them you are not going to kill me. You are not going to kill me. If you say that, you are the first person I'm going to bury. They know when you talk like that. And they will never come back. They know that the word we carry is an incorruptible seed. Amen. They know that the word we carry is fire. They know that the word we carry is a hammer that breaks every stubborn power. They know that. They know that the word we carry is a, a two-double-edged sword that can cut them when I do like this and I bring it like that. They are gone. They know that. So talk the word of God. Let the devil know that you carry the word of God. And I mean the, the rhema word of God. Not the logos, but the rhema. The revealed word that you know. The way that you walk in. The way that you sleep in. The way that you eat all the time. Talk to the devil. And the Bible says he left him for a while. Yes, devil, you will come. But at least I can rest for now. Because I've spoken the word. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, talk. I know Americans, you know how to defend yourself. You talk when, when it comes to talk. <laughs> but when it comes to the devil, you don't talk. <laughs> so fearful. You talk. I know you, you are good people. You, you are an example. You, we follow you. You talk. Whenever things are not right, you talk. So I want you to be talking to the devil now. Amen. Don't talk aimlessly. Talk the real word. Have the real word within you. Quickly, we are going. Hallelujah. Seven. Live a holy life. I talked about this. I'm not going to dwell about that. Please live a holy life. The devil is not afraid of a sinner. He counts them as his. And this church today doesn't want preachers that talk about sin. Because they are afraid. Some preachers are afraid when they talk about sin that you will leave. Okay, go. I'm sorry, Bishop. But we, 
when you go, you're going to meet the devil. So remain here. So stop a life of sin. Stop deceiving yourself. Man reaps what he sows. Stop living a life of drunkenness. Stop living a life of marijuana. Drug addiction. You smoke dope, then you come here, you pretend like you're feeling, oh, like the Holy Ghost, then you, you are speaking out of drugs. I know that. You pretend like you have the Holy Ghost when there are drugs behind your back, behind your brain. Repent. Repent. Live a holy life. Eight, walk in the spirit of God. All the time. Because fear also is a spirit. Amen. Fear also is a spirit. There's no way you can walk in the flesh. And expect to overcome the devil. In fact the devil is a spirit as well. He is a spirit. So how do you overcome a spirit. When you are in the flesh. Most of the children today. The children of God. Walk in the flesh. Pastors walk in the flesh. Bishops walk in the flesh. You need to understand that the God that we serve is a spirit. And battles are won in the spiritual realm. You win in the spiritual realm, not in the physical realm. So be in the spirit. Whatever you defeat in the spiritual realm manifests in the physical. When you win the devil in the spiritual realm, let me tell you, witches will be looking at you and be fleeing from you. There was a day, Bishop, I was walking, going somewhere. Then I met a mentally sick person. And he had an axe on his shoulder. And everyone that saw him were running away from me, giving him the way to go. Then I was coming, and I'm a, I'm a preacher. And I said, if I run, then the devil is going to win. <laughs> I, he said, Lord, you called me. Then I started walking with all the boldness. And before I met this mentally healed person, some a bit distant from me, then he just walked out of the way and went into the bush. I said, praise the Lord. Walk in the power of God. We are not just talking about the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the power of God. It's the power of God that will make the enemies know that you are not just powerless. They will know that you are in the power of God. They know what power you are carrying. Whether you are powerless or you are powerful. So please stop living in this flesh. Stop pleasing the flesh. May God increase his power through your life. That's how much somebody told, who told you that no, the devil has got more power than that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil has no power. Come and join occultism will give you power. You'll be passing through the war. Jesus passed through the war. Those are counterfeit miracles of the devil. Am I teaching here? Yes, Hallelujah. Number nine. Honor your spiritual authority. And in this I mean your spiritual father. Some of you ask me why is he talking about this? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 says honor. <laughs> and let me read that one. Hallelujah. I want to read that one. Hebrews 13 verse 17. The Bible says obey. Not honor. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves. For the watch. For your souls. As they that must give. An account. Or give account. That they may do it with joy. And not with grief, for they, for that is unprofitable for you. Now, I want to pick the word there, watch. Our bishop here is your spiritual father. And as long as you don't honor this man, 
there are battles that you cannot win in your life. Let me say this, God honors authority. I say that once again, God honors authority. And if you can't honor authority, God will not honor you. Let me tell you this. There are some battles that he fights that you cannot fight. There are some demons that cannot reach you that can only reach him. Do you know that? Is this new here? Yes. Honor your spiritual father. He works as a watchman over your life. And any watchman makes sure that he defends whatever he is watching. You don't know the sleepless nights that he spends praying for you. And whenever he prays, God hears. There are demons that divert from your home to another home because he was praying for you. There are demons that changes the address because he was praying for you. So, no matter what you hear in this world, preachers, you know, doing all sorts of wickedness, wickedness, please honor your spiritual father. There are battles that you cannot fight, he can fight. Today I walked with him. Yesterday he was opening the door for me and I walk in. Today the spirit of the Lord rebuked me. We were entering into this restaurant. I went there, Bishop, today it's me opening for you. <laughs> and he didn't know what I was doing. And he entered. The next time then again I opened. Because I look at him, the gray hair that he has simply means that there are battles he has fought. And let me tell you, there are demons that we fight at our levels as men of God. There are demons he has fought that he has defeated on your behalf. A good parent leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Why? Because he laid a proper foundation. And this is our spiritual father here. Honor him. Stop talking about him anyhow. Stop finding thoughts in him and in the first lady. I always tell the saints of God that if you want to find a fault in me, you will find it. Because I'm not 100% God. I am man. So if you came in the life of our spiritual father here to find some thoughts, thoughts in him, you will find them. But all I am asking you is to pray for him. Because you don't know the battles that he's going through. And his family. We have saints that talk too much. And pray less. We have saints that are carnal. That whatever they see the preacher they talk about it. Our own. And the sister. Got lepers. Because they talked. What was not right? Oh, he's just a preacher. He's, he's just like us. He, how can he say that? Did you hear? You have no power to do that. There are certain things that you need to understand as a child of God. And if you fail to understand that, the devil will get creep on you and kill you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray today that somebody will begin to honor the spiritual authority. Don't respect your president and fail to respect your bishop. He's more honorable than your president. Yes. Because some of these presidents go to bow to evil altars. Go to some are free mansions. Let me talk about that. I know what happens in Africa. So he's more honorable. So we honor you. I say, we honor you, sir. He's more honorable. I looked at him. I've been admiring him. I am admiring him. And I was telling God, Father, please let me reach like him. Let me reach at his level, saving you the way he has saved you. God ministered to me today. Hallelujah, somebody. 
in conclusion, I want you to have knowledge today that Jesus Christ defeated the devil. We do not have an enemy that has got power. He is not some superpower. He is a defeated fella. The time for the devil to go even back to heaven when God has a meeting, if you didn't know, at one time the devil had boldness to go in heaven and found himself in the meeting of God. But this time, he has no power to go to heaven. His power has been stripped off. Jesus goes on the cross of Calvary. And he says, and he dies and he comes, he rose, he rose from, he rise from the dead. And he declares all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. If Jesus declares that all power in heaven and on earth has been given to him, then no devil worshiper anywhere can convince me today that the devil worshippers and the freemasons and the witches and the voodoos has got power. If all power has been given to him, then it means the devil has got no power. I came to speak to you tonight even as we go home that you go in the same power because the same power has been delegated to us. What Jesus did was he went even in hell down there and he made the devil while they were celebrating that Jesus has been crucified on the cross of Calvary. His spirit, his power went down in the throne room of the devil. And Jesus reached there as the devil was celebrating with his demons. And he said, give me back the keys of hell and death. Jesus. And the devil was afraid and he said, oh, the man is on the cross. But he said, here I am. You thought you killed me. You thought you crucified me. And he said, bring the keys. And the Bible says, that it was made a public spectacle. Meaning that he was, can I have something like a cloth? He was dragged. Somebody help me. Jesus held him by something like a mantle. Uh, grabbed him by the hand. And told him that devil, let me tell you, you are defeated today. I have gotten the power that you thought you had. You thought you were the God of this world. But I want to tell you that heaven is mine. And the earth and the fullness they are in belongs to me. This is the knowledge that we need to walk in as children of God. That our God overcame on our behalf. If somebody got in the, in, in the ring and fought the battle for me and defeated my enemy, what is the reason for me to go in the ring, Bishop, and start fighting again? All I need is to walk in the defeat that my master walked in. Then I'll be able, amen, to know that God has done it. This is what Jesus Christ did. Leave it for me. This is the devil. And he grabbed him by the, by the arm and started dragging him before the demons to show the demons that the devil that you trust in has been defeated. The devil that you think has got power has been stripped of his power. I came to preach to somebody today, tonight, that the devil that you think has got power in America has been stripped of his power. The voodoo that you think has got power has been stripped of their power. The devil worshippers, the freemasons, and the illuminantes have been stripped of his power. I came to announce to you that we've been given that power. 
And that power is God is called the dynamis power. Yes. Or the dynamite power. Now, now the, the word dynamite comes from the word uh, you mean dynamis, which means an explosive power. I came to preach to somebody in this place that you are not just some kind of power. Mm, and the devil when he hurts on you you can explode anytime I came to preach to somebody that you are untouchable your power is so powerful that the devil cannot locate you your, the power that you are coming is the power that the devil cannot even touch you amen somebody oh Jesus help me today help us to understand the power that we carry hallelujah so the enemy was told that today you are defeated you have no power today devil and i give the power this is why jesus said that do not go and preach until you are endued with power from on high why because he didn't want his disciples and the apostles to go powerless because he knew that when they go to preach without power they'll be vulnerable i came to preach to you today that you've got the power you are not vulnerable you cannot be tormented by the devil you cannot be reached out by the devil not even in your sleep not even in your car not even your children i come to announce to you today that we carry the all power and the power that we carry is the omnipotent power the power of god now i came to preach to somebody today that realize who you are know your identity walk in your identity walk in your power let the devil know that you carry the presence of god you are the ark of god today hallelujah wherever you go the presence of god go with you wherever you are asleep the presence of god sleeps with you when the devil comes to visit you he doesn't see jane or matthew or emmanuel he sees god in you and i come to announce to you that every devil that has been visiting you in your sleep visiting your house you are renting that house with your own money you bought that house not with the devil but with god's money so why should the devil be visiting your home oh come on somebody rise up today and go and talk to that devil tell the devil you have no power in my life tell that devil that has been tormenting you at school threatening you burning candles and going through circles and trying to prove as so though they have the power we carry the power of god yes we carry the power of god and somebody in here is going to explode and scatter the powers of the enemy that has been tormenting you and oppressing you with fear i rise in the authority and the power of god that god anoint you today anoint you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet that wherever you step you step with the power of god wherever you go you go with the power of god tomorrow you walk in your office and every one of your employees will tremble because the power that you carry is that the power of the witches or the power of the voodoo's but the power of god i pray for you today that the lord anoints you with power greater power yes to walk on the devil know your authority the bible says sit at my right hand until i make 
your enemy is your foot what it means by that is that know your authority know who you are know what you walk in know the God you save know the power you are given and the Lord God will make your enemies your foot stay upon sickness stay upon the witches stay upon the voodoo's no more fear no more torment no more nightmares may God give you a busy sleep tonight and in this month of August and in the month to come may God watch over your soul may God arise over your life and all your enemies be scattered Jesus help us Lord release your power release your anointing and let the Freemasons the Voodoo's the witches the Satanists and any devil worshipper know that you are a child of God somebody shout hallelujah shout hallelujah you are walking in power everyone that will look at you will dream of everyone that will look into your eyes will see the fire of God in you no arrow of the devil shall touch you no power of the enemy shall touch you may God build a hedge around your life around your children you have been tormented for too long enough is enough you've suffered for too long you've been spending sleepless night for too long enough is enough devil hear me wherever you are we rise in the authority and the power of God we command you devil wherever you are whatever you have done whichever way you've been using route you have been using point of contact you have been using against our lives we rebuke you we bind you we render your power powerless devil hear us today we carry the power do you know the power that you carry you carry the dunamis power may God almighty defeat your enemy in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 57 the Bible says for we thank God through Christ Jesus who has given us victory you are the victory I said you are the victory victory over the devil's power victory over sickness victory victory all over your life victory reign in your soul victory reign in your marriage victory reign in your finances victory reign in this church somebody shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout hallelujah touch your neighbor and say neighbor I have the victory I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that died for me come on somebody shout I have the victory yeah 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 I have a victory I talk victory I walk victory I sleep victory I eat victory I am not a victim but a victor I am not a victim but a victor walk like a victor talk like a victor because the one in you is greater than the devil that is in the world devil we bind you we break every altar that you have raised in America we break every 
every freemasonic power devil will bind you we bind you devil we bind hypertension we bind blood pressure we bind diabetes because we know it comes from you devil we bind cancer we bind every works of darkness in this land we bind homosexuality we bind lesbianism we bind it 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 somebody shout hallelujah Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. I feel, I feel the presence of God in the house. Bishop, I feel God here. I feel God, Bishop. Somebody's life is going, is, is going to be transformed tonight. Amen. Amen. No more visitation of the devil over your life. Your children have been taken by the devil. We are taking back our children. No more drugs over our children. The devil took away your husband. You are getting by the power of God your husband. You are getting back your husband. You are getting back your wife. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You have all the power. Power. You have all the power, Lord. You have all the power. We thank you, Lord, for the power. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We cannot be living like cowards all the time. Father, help us to take over. Take over the devil's kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. I want to pray for somebody today. Father, deliver. Deliver that your child from fear. Fear of the unknown. Deliver them, Father. I stand on this altar in agreement with the father of the house. Bishop Rogers, Father, with the anointing that he carries over his life, I speak, Lord, deliverance over your children. Deliver them from fear right now. May your power move upon their lives. May they begin to walk in the dunamis power. In the name of Jesus, tonight we bind every demonic visitation. We bind every nightmare. We bind whatever channel the enemy uses to navigate to our homes. We release the fire of the Holy Ghost in that root of the devil. Every witch that shall fly in this wind, you did not create this wind for the devil. They shall fall. They shall crash. They shall crash. No witch shall operate tonight. No witch shall fly tonight. In this wind, we need this confusion and the fire of the Holy Ghost, and we shall crash, and, and we shall hear that the witch crash on their broom. Father, you are God. You said you, you said you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established, and your light shall shine your way. Father, we pray for our children. I pray for my family back home. I pray for everyone in the US. That Father, they will begin to walk in your power. In your power. Fear will rebuke you. We come against you. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Come on, give God a big hand right now. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I want
want to say this that some of you became became sick because the enemy just gave you a sign and not a sickness and because you were afraid of the sign and you know how headache is you confessed it and said I am sick and then the devil brought in sickness I cast that sickness that came with fear in your body in Jesus name faith is a confession whatsoever you say is what you receive and the Bible says the just shall live by faith and somebody shout hallelujah not by fear the just shall live by faith may you live by faith I said may you live by faith and faith gives us victory in Jesus mighty name may God bless you and grant you victory thank you Bishop once again thank you sir. the Lord everybody certainly we thank and praise God tonight for such a powerful message fear and faith and victory thank God for it I, I, I just believe that God is trying to prepare this church for something we may have the greatest fight that we've ever fought but we're supposed to have the victory because he gave us the victory. And I don't know, but uh, it's, 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 it's important that we overcome fear because fear has torment. And it's, 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 anybody can have it. And he said we all have a certain amount, but you can't let fear get the victory over your life. You have to do what God is asking out of your life. Everybody in here should want to live like the kind of life that God has set forth, forth for us to do. Uh, uh, we, we just got to do it. There's too many things. The time is short. There are too many things that God wants us to do that is going to take faith and not fear obedience that we can get this victory over the enemy so we thank God tonight for Bishop uh, preaching so hard and teaching as Paul said with simplicity where we can understand and know that none of us are exempt from the devil okay, the devil with, after everybody in here Everyone, amen. God told uh, Saul to kill the witches, and he didn't do it. And the witch got him, so to speak. But I'm thanking God for the message tonight and what we have heard. Amen. He's got one more night with us. That's tomorrow night. The Lord's willing. It's kind of like what Bishop. Uh, Star Wars said, one more night with the frogs. <laughs> but we pray, we praise God for him preaching tonight, teaching tonight. And I hope that all of you were blessed like I was. Anybody in here had a real encounter with the witch or with the evil spirit? A real encounter. They are intelligent. And they know you. I've heard people say that uh, they were asleep and some come in the room and cover their mouth and face and couldn't breathe. See that boy sitting over there? And the only way he could get it off of him was to say Jesus. And that demon got up off of him, whatever it was, which I don't know. But it's important for us. Uh, 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 we, we, we're going to have to do some spiritual fighting. Spiritual fighting. Spiritual fighting. So God can bless us and keep us. Okay, I'm not going to hold you long uh, any longer. We want to receive an offering tonight and um, we'll let you go home and let's receive an offering. Tell somebody to come to church tomorrow. The 
tomorrow night. God is, is using this uh, uh, man from Africa. I, I, I said today, we were kind of talking, but yesterday I said it's, it's something that God would have to send a preacher to the United States to evangelize their America. We need evangelizing. Yeah, yeah. You need power to get your loved ones out of the enemy's hands. So we thank God tonight for powerful, powerful message. Now, we had not said anything about an offering, but on tomorrow night, come prepared to, to give a great offering. Not a good one, but a great one. Consider uh, what you've heard today and the food that he prepared for us uh, was outstanding. A good chef. Amen. A good chef. A good chef, Sister Gloria. You know how to cook rice. He loved rice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should have said that, should I? <laughs> yeah, he loved rice. All right. Are there any announcements while they're receiving the offering? Are there any announcements?